there and welcome. Today I want to take you back in time with me to a kitchen filled with the nostalgic aromas of Easter past. As every Orthodox Christian, of course I love Easter Sunday and food is definitely a big part of this special day. Romanian Easter brunch brings generation together and celebrates simple in season ingredients. So today I'm going to show you how you can prepare some of the Easter dishes that are on every Romanian's table. My meal plan for this episode consists of three super delicious, easy to make dishes. I'm going to start with the dessert. We call it Pasca and it's made all over Eastern Europe for Easter. It's a type of cheesecake studded with raisins and topped with sugar. And it's actually the easiest cheesecake I know. Just basic ingredients that you mix together and that's basically it. Easter cheesecake has a lot of variations in my country. I like mine to have an almost like pudding consistency. I prefer this recipe over the more traditional version which has a layer of brioche dough and it's also delicious but to me it tastes more like a tender bread than cheesecake. The star of this dish is of course the cheese. I'm making my own fresh cheese today. You can skip this step and buy ricotta cheese from the store. For even a creamier, smoother texture, you can replace some or even all of your ricotta with cream cheese or mascarpone. To make my own fresh cheese, I bring my milk to a temperature of 190 degrees Fahrenheit. I prefer raw full fat milk. You can use store-bought fresh milk too, however, do not buy ultra-pasteurized milk. Once my milk has come to the right temperature, I turn off the heat and immediately add my vinegar. I start with 2 tablespoons of white distilled vinegar and I'll add more only if it doesn't curdle enough. You can add as much as 1 quarter of a cup per half a gallon of milk. The mixture will start to curdle almost immediately. After stirring gently for 5 seconds, I will let it sit untouched for about 15 minutes. Time is up, so I'm transferring the curds to a cheesecloth lined strainer. They need to drain for 10 to 15 minutes for a light and fluffy cheese. If you want it a bit drier, just strain longer. Now that my cheese is done, I'm prepping 80 grams of raisins by chopping and soaking them in warm water. We can finally mix all the ingredients together. So I'm whisking 150 grams of white sugar with 6 eggs, 1 tablespoon of vanilla extract and the juice of a mandarin. Next, I'm adding 100 grams of white flour and whisk again until it's well incorporated. To this mixture, I'm adding 500 grams of cheese, 400 grams of sour cream and 100 grams of butter. Guys, you can add up to 200 grams of butter if your sour cream or cheesecake are low fat. I will then butter a round pan and transfer the mixture carefully.
Right before baking, I'm topping my soaked raisins and a few tablespoons of dark chocolate chips. I will bake my cheesecake in a preheated oven for about 60 minutes at 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it's time for the most famous Romanian Easter appetizer. It is hands down my favorite Easter dish and it's called the drob. It is actually a liver meatloaf. Traditionally it's made of lamb liver, but here in the States it is very hard to find lamb liver, so I'm making the chicken liver version. Although not as popular, Romanians who do not like lamb will often replace it with chicken livers. To be honest, I like both versions. The lamb meatloaf is definitely fattier and more flavorful, while the meatloaf made with chicken livers is a bit creamier and milder in taste. This recipe requires a lot of in-season herbs like spring onions, garlic chives and dill. It's time to prep my meatloaf. Here I'm chopping three bunches of green onion, one huge bunch of dill and half a yellow onion. Okay, so let's start making this delicious meatloaf. I will first saute my onions in butter and lard on a medium flame. I will also boil 4 eggs for about 6 minutes. I need them to be medium boiled. In another heavy pan, I will quickly sear in batches 500 grams of chicken livers. I don't want to cook them completely, just to brown them a bit. The inside will remain pink since they will finish cooking later in the oven. Now that my onions are golden brown, I'm adding my greens and keep sauteing everything for a couple of minutes until all the water and juices from the greens evaporate. You still want them to look green and vibrant, so please do not overcook them. Liver looks good too. I'm removing it from the pan and let it cool. Next, I'm quickly searing two boneless skinless chicken legs. Meanwhile, I'm chopping all my liver and put it in a bowl along with the greens. When the chicken legs look nice and brown, I will remove them from the pan and let them cool enough so I can cut them in bite-sized pieces. I will place them over my other ingredients and will season the mixture with salt and pepper. In 
in order to bind all the ingredients together, I'm adding a pound of pork ground and four whole eggs. These two ingredients will add fat and moisture to my meatloaf and they will also act as a glue. Without them, my meatloaf will end up dry and will probably fall apart when I pull it out of the pan. It's time to assemble this dish. I'm putting some of the mixture on the bottom of my pan. The layer has a thickness of around 1 inch. I'm pressing gently with the back of the spoon to ensure there are no air gaps in my meatloaf. On top of the layer, I'm lining my boiled eggs up in a row, then I top them with the remaining liver mixture until the eggs are well covered. And that's it guys! Just bake it for 50 minutes up to an hour at 360 degrees Fahrenheit. After that, let it cool completely before slicing it. We eat it cold as an appetizer along with homemade bread, mustard and spring vegetables like radishes, lettuce or green onion. My last dish is the most emblematic Orthodox Easter dish. I'm talking about red Easter eggs. You can dye them any color you like, usually we color them blue, green, yellow too, but red is an absolute must and also the traditional color for Orthodox Easter eggs. Speaking of traditions, a lot of people use food dye to paint Easter eggs, however, I prefer the old way of doing it, which is boiling the eggs in yellow onion skins. It's true that the color is not as bright and uniform, but natural dye gives the eggs character and definitely a unique look. I'm starting with washing a couple of white eggs in a water or vinegar solution. The eggshells have to be clean, if not, the dye won't transfer properly. I recommend you use white eggs instead of brown if you want to obtain a more accurate color. I find using brown eggs will make your Easter eggs looking a bit darker and muddier in color. Next, I'm adding the skins of about 7 to 8 large yellow onions to the bottom of a saucepan. I'm placing my eggs carefully, I definitely do not want to crack them, then I cover them with cold water by 1 inch. I'm gonna bring the water to a boil, then cover the pot and let the eggs cook covered for exactly 10 minutes. Time is up, I'm taking my eggs out of the water. At this point I can discard the onion skins, they've done their job, but I still need the liquid so I'm straining it. When it cools down significantly I will pour it back over my eggs. You don't want to overcook your eggs, so be sure the liquid is just warm and not hot. You can let your eggs bathe in there until you are satisfied with how they look. The color will continue to intensify the longer they stay submerged. After about 20 minutes, I decided I'm happy with how my eggs turned out, so I'm removing them. To make them look even nicer, I will gently pat them dry with a paper towel and rub them with a bit of oil and voila, absolutely gorgeous! I will quickly plate everything and gather my family around the kitchen table. Here is the end of my video, friends. It's been a pleasure to share with you a part of my culture. To me, these dishes are a precious link to the past and a taste of home in every bite. I hope you're gonna try at least one of them. Happy Easter, everybody, and see you next week. Bye!
Hristos a înviat. Adevărat a înviat.